Welcome to our Emergency Preparedness video series. This is one of 12 videos that will become available during this year, one each month. First, here are our faces behind the voices. I'm Jennifer Ponce, Emergency Services Coordinator for the City of Morgan Hill. And I'm Randy Christensen, an instructor for Morgan Hill's Community Emergency Response Team. Being prepared for disasters and emergencies can seem like a big job. Many people don't know where to start, so they never start at all. Do One Thing is a 12-month program and has been adopted nationally by emergency services of many counties. The program makes it easy for you to prepare yourself, your family, and your community for emergencies or disasters. The goal of this presentation is to describe options on how to obtain and store three days worth of food for everyone in your household without any outside help. We have three primary objectives in this presentation. Create a three-day supply of emergency food for everyone in your household. Take the necessary steps to ensure the food in your refrigerator and freezer will remain safe. And lastly, meet the needs of anyone in your family that may have special dietary needs. So why should you have an emergency food supply? In a disaster, you may not be able to get to a grocery store. Or a store might not be available or have the items you want. And also during a disaster, you may not have access to a working stove or microwave. How do you obtain an emergency food supply? You may not have to go to great lengths to create your food supply. You most likely don't have to create special shelves or purchase expensive food kits. You may have most of what you need for a three-day supply right now. The key to a good emergency food storage plan is buy it ahead of time, buy items when prices are reduced, rotate your stock and replace items as they are used, buy those items that your family enjoys and are accustomed to. How much food should you store? You probably already know how much your family eats in a three-day period. Create a balanced three-day meal plan from foods that will last on your shelf for a while. Have that meal plan written down, posted in the cabinet, and refer to it each time you go shopping. Over time, it will become second nature to replenish it. Don't forget to stock some food for your pets. The mnemonic B-U-S stands for balance, usability, and shelf life. Balance. When people are under stress, a balanced diet is more critical. The stress will probably also require each family member to consume more calories. If there are existing health issues, they could become more critical with stress and a poor diet. We need to include a variety of foods from the basic food groups. Those are starchy carbohydrates, fruits and vegetables, protein, dairy, and healthy fats. Make sure to include some of the fun things that your family likes to eat. Don't forget about items to keep their energy up. Remember, though, that those comfort foods should not be the largest part of their diet. Usability. Select food items that don't necessarily need to be cooked, refrigerated, or require additional water to prepare, such as canned or dried meat, dry cereal, and canned vegetables. Don't forget to have a can opener. Shelf life. Regularly check the expiration dates on each of the food items. Rotate through your items, making sure that you're using the older ones first. Best before dates are not necessarily expiration dates. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has created a free phone app called Food Keeper. It's also available on the internet at foodsafety.gov. These two resources can tell you how long foods will last, whether they are fresh, packaged, canned, refrigerated, or frozen. Let's talk about your food storage options. Fresh foods have a very limited shelf life, so they aren't really recommended, unless you have a garden with fruits and vegetables. Dried and packaged foods should be stored in a cool, dry, and dark areas. They normally last from four months to one year, but may be good past the best buy date, although they may eventually become stale or develop an off flavor. Canned foods can last from two years or longer, but their color and texture may change after some time. Try to store at 75 degrees or lower. Some 100-year-old canned items have been found to be safe if stored properly. If the cans have swollen, discard them. The USDA says that all foods stored at zero degrees Fahrenheit are safe to eat indefinitely, but since newer refrigerator freezers in our homes have a defrost cycle, 
Most foods are not kept at zero degrees all of the time. Dependent upon the food, storage can normally be between 3 to 12 months. Dehydrated foods and grades can normally last from 5 to 15 years. If in a vacuum sealed mylar bag with oxygen absorbers, they can possibly last as long as 30 years. Freeze dried foods, if stored in a one gallon nitrogen sealed can, are many times advertised to last 25 to 30 years, but only one to two weeks once opened. Prepared foods, such as MREs, are meals ready to eat. They're what the military feeds soldiers in the field. They average around 1,250 calories each and are normally good for three to seven years depending upon how they are stored. If stored at 60 degrees, the shelf life is typically five years. If stored at 70 degrees, they will last for about three years. When buying, particularly on the internet, check for the manufacturing date. Many sellers sell expired or near expired products. One side note of interest, you can purchase heaters for MREs that with a very small amount of water will create a chemical reaction and make the mill really hot. Things to know about refrigeration temperatures. During an extended power outage, temperatures in your refrigerator and freezer will begin to rise, even if the doors stay closed. As the temperatures rise, harmful bacteria may begin to grow on your food. If the temperature in your refrigerator stays above 41 degrees Fahrenheit for more than four hours, perishable food items such as milk, lunch meat, mayonnaise-based salads, poultry items, and leftovers may be unsafe to eat. If the temperature in your freezer stays above 41 degrees Fahrenheit for more than one to two days, food may be unsafe to eat. Always check the color and odor of food, particularly meat that has been thawed. If it is questionable, throw it out. Make sure it is discarded where animals can't get to it. To keep your food safe, place a thermometer in your refrigerator and freezer. If a power outage is anticipated, reduce the temperature in your fridge and freezer. The colder your food is, the more time it takes to thaw. Containers of ice in your freezer will assist in keeping the temperatures lower. When the power goes out, cover the fridge or freezer in newspapers and blankets. Keep vents clear in case the freezer starts operating again. Avoid opening the door to the fridge or freezer. Use dry ice if available. Identify a source for dry ice in advance. And remember that if the power outage is widespread, there may, may be a lot of competition for this resource. If you've had a loss of power and you don't know the temperatures of your refrigerator, or if the temperature was off for more than four hours, discard the food. If not refrigerated, perishable food can cause food poisoning. If the frozen food still has ice crystals in it, it should be safe to eat. Check the color and smell of food to see if it's changed or is foul. Pay very close attention to meat. When in doubt, throw it out. If someone has a special diet, serious effects can result if the right food isn't available in a disaster. Make sure to include blenders, food scales, or feeding tubes if you evacuate. It may be wise to have extra food preparation equipment at a relative's or friend's house. You may even consider having an extra set in a special go bag. There can be serious health effects for some people if they don't have the right food available or if they come in contact with something that they're allergic to. Alternately, if people are given the wrong foods, there can be very harmful results. People who are exposed to gluten or don't receive enough carbohydrates can have very bad reactions. You may want to talk to a healthcare provider or nutritionist about non-perishable food options if you have a family member with special dietary needs. Include information about medical conditions and special diets in your go bags. If you have to evacuate to a public shelter, this information will assist attendees better understand your special needs. In review, we have discussed three important aspects concerning emergency food. Create an emergency three-day menu for your family and stock your pantry. Remember to routinely rotate and replace used items. Take the necessary steps to make sure that the food in your refrigerator and freezer will stay safe. Discard it if there is any question about whether it's safe or not. Take action and plan on how you can address any special diets or prep equipment needed by your family members. This concludes the presentation of Do One Thing Food. Thank you for reviewing.